Welcome to We Politics, brought to you by the Windsor Essex Catholic District School Board. I'm your host, Rob Miller. During this series, we will be talking with candidates in the Windsor and Essex ridings. All 17 candidates were invited. We will be speaking with Giovanni Abati right after this word from our sponsor. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. Giovanni Abati is the candidate for the Green Party in Windsor-Tecumseh. He recently ran for Windsor City Council as well. He is a professional truck driver and an environmental consultant. Welcome. Hello, Rob. Hi. Thanks for having us here, or me here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you want to be a member of Parliament? Well, um, I, I believe I bring some background and knowledge in various aspects of the environment, uh, employment, the needs of you know families, everyday families. I've had an elderly father who suffered from dementia. I've had a son and needed childcare spaces and affordable, a well-paying job for my uh, spousal equivalent and myself. And um, I, I've always cared about the community. I just can't get out much with my job. It takes up a lot of hours, but I found that this way I can, you know, help the community, look forward to, you know, keeping the environment in, in the mind of, of the government when they make decisions. Uh, do you think the current government doesn't uh, keep you in mind? Uh, me personally, not really. I, you know, I, I don't have a family anymore. A lot of the things they do is for families, which is great. But as just a single individual, you know, I seem to be paying a lot and not getting a lot in return. Not that it matters because I'm big on government. We need to support everyone. Uh, environmentally, they talk a good game, just like they did with, uh, they talk about oil and gas and emissions, and then they go and buy a pipeline, and they're still feeding into that whole industry when we really have to get off that industry. I'm not going to fear monger everyone saying it's the end of all times, but it is bad. We see um, the glaciers melting. We see forest fires. Uh, we see um, pretty much problems in every aspect. The way we develop land, it, it's, it's attracting heat and warming our planet globally. So uh, we need, we need uh, sustainable development. I'm not against development, neither is the Green Party, but it, we're about sustainability. And you know, the, the environment, a healthy environment, helps a prosperous economy. Otherwise, you're, with a prosperous economy that doesn't take the environment into consideration, we're always mitigating, you know, we're building flood prevention things. We, we need to buy more water bombers. We're fighting forest fires and eventually, and then working on clean water. We're always losing something, erosion, you know, so. Okay, let's keep with the environmental theme, but uh, drill it down to Windsor Tecumseh. What do you see as the number one environmental problem in Windsor Tecumseh? Yeah, that's a <laughs> good question. There's more than one, really. Um, we're talking about all of Windsor, you know, Essex County, uh, less than 8% forest cover. That's a problem. Uh, that, that creates heat islands. The whole, the whole county basically attracts heat. Uh, so we don't, we don't have our waterways protected well enough. Uh, you know, all the rivers and streams are basically exposed to sunlight and erosion filling with sediment which attracts heat and keeps our water bodies warm which doesn't allow a lot of species to survive in there. Also flooding, just shorelines, look at, you know, all the shorelines whether it's our rivers or, you know, the Detroit River coastline or Little River, you know, Puce, Pike Creek, all the different uh, rivers that flow into the Lake St. Clair or Lake Erie watershed. Um, are all affected by storms that are, you know, it, which is a greater aspect globally because we're, are, we're affecting weather patterns the way we develop all across Canada and the world, really. We're, are, we're clear cutting. They're worried about the Amazon. We're doing that in Nova Scotia. We're doing that in BC. We're clear cutting places. Up north, uh, we have all the oil and gas industries. And what these things are doing is creating, so there's a, a term called albedo effect, which basically light colors reflect sunlight off. 
and dark colors, so black, attract heat, you know, you, you know that when you wear clothing in the summertime. So that's what's happening in the north. Our, our snow and ice cover is leaving both our waterways and our land. We have more development, so more dark soil is exposed, or even oceans are exposed. So what that does, it attracts heat into those land bases or water bases, and that creates the heat to expand out, so we're losing glacial cover, we're losing more snow cover, and that also attracts storm patterns further north, which attracts dry, um, warmer air from the south. It takes it further north, which absorbs more glacier, glacial ice and more water moisture. We're getting more forest fires, getting more droughts. Then those storms work their way back across through our area, our area, dump a lot of water on the Great Lakes watershed, and that's why we have such extremes in lake levels at this point, just because we've altered so many different like weather patterns across the planet. Okay, I don't want to pigeonhole you just on environmental concerns because the Green Party has a lot of other platforms or planks to their platform which don't involve the environment at all, even though you're green. Uh, for example, what do you think is most misunderstood about the Green Party? Mm -hmm. Exactly what you said. I'm glad you realize it. Yeah, we are more than just the environment. Uh, we're, we're about creating affordability for people. I know all the parties say it, but we will do it. Um, we're about affordable housing. We want to uh, make universal pharmacare and dental care for lower income people. That reduces costs for everyday people. You know, we don't have to worry about your drugs and things. We want to create universal health, uh, education so there's no post-secondary tuition, uh, whether it's trades, university or college so people that are we want to create a transition economy going away from fossil fuel industries to to green economies so people can get trained in uh, retrofitting buildings uh, um, building uh, windmills or solar panels and green green technologies to get away from fossil fuels as well as there's abandoned wells everywhere we need to clean those uh, seal them up, wh whatever the process involved with that. Uh, also that um, those, therm those wells, those deep abandoned wells, also create thermal heat. So we like to transform the energy coming from those wells wherever feasible into heat energy sources for whatever greenhouses or other industries in those regions. Um, also for seniors, uh, we need to create more beds. We want to we have investments, mostly the investments, they're for everyone, they're for everyday people and businesses. They're like tax incentives. So if you have a piece of property, whether it's a historic property or any property that's abandoned, you'd get tax incentives so that you'd put those buildings on the market and people can transform them into like low cost housing. Um, we wanna um, do a housing strategy, a co-op housing strategy so that more businesses, and right now, uh, back in the 70s, the federal government stopped funding geared like for rental housing because they wanted the housing market to go up so they stopped funding rental units. So we want to invest in, in corporations and businesses to start reinvesting uh, their investments and money into rental units as opposed to just houses. So those are some of the uh, initiatives we have. You mentioned Pharmacare. Uh, what would you do in Windsor-Tecumseh specifically? What's needed for seniors in Windsor-Tecumseh? Uh, well, just offering universal pharmacare gives everyone free medication so that that really helps everybody you know seniors more so because they probably rely more on medications than younger people hopefully well not hopefully but i mean you expect younger people to be more healthy so they wouldn't need that as much but uh, seniors it's it's quite a bit of their income gear spent on on medication so that aspect we also believe that we need we need more beds my father uh, ended up passing away at uh, Hotel Dew. He spent three months in Hotel Dew because we couldn't find any place for him to go. They wanted to send him to Leamington. Well, he would have died lonely there. Like my brother and I worked. Uh, my mom, she wouldn't be able to drive out there. She's 89, she couldn't drive out to Leamington. So he was stuck at Hotel Dew, spending the last days of his life in, in a room with four other people or three other people uh, you know, uh, nothing against the staff, because the staff, this isn't even what they're trained for, right? And they're taking care of my, my poor father with dementia um, and all these other individuals that have Alzheimer's and dementia, which really need facilities specifically geared to seniors in these conditions. We're looking at a dementia strategy where we do more research and invest in, in beds, right? So continuing care, you mean? Yeah. Just to get like, them out of the acute care beds. That's right. Uh, how about uh, 
getting the youth vote, are you finding you got a lot of young people following you? Um, I think so. Uh, well, I think everyone. We're trying to get people from all the different parties. Uh, you know, there's a lot of progressive people, a lot of people that understand the environment is a concern and it, uh, it affects all aspects of the economy. Um, the youth, are, uh, they seem more aware. Um, <clears throat> we've been hindered, uh, like, you know, the NDP, the Greens. I wouldn't say we're fringe parties, but we're not, you know, we don't have as much money as the Liberals and Conservatives. And the policies that the Liberals and Conservatives have been putting through, so we want to the, to eliminate the first past the post, like Justin Trudeau said, this would be the last election with first past the post. We'd have electoral reform, like proportional res representation. In 2015. Well, that the last election. That's right. Yeah, the last election was supposed to be the last election for that. So this election was supposed to be one where we'd have re proportional representation. And then he decides that no, that wasn't good enough. So basically, what that did, and Stephen Harper also. The previous, uh, when he was in charge, when he had the majority, he stopped funding. There used to be, I can't remember what it's called, but every vote your party got, you would get a certain amount of money, like a dollar and a quarter or a dollar sixty or something. So if you voted Green, a dollar sixty would go to the Green Party. If you voted Liberal, a dollar sixty would go to the Liberal Party. Well, Stephen Harper stopped that, which also affects the voice of smaller parties because they're always going to have, the bigger parties have all sorts of funding they can get. Um, so that's that hurt the smaller parties like us. The lack of proportional representation hurt us because now people are going to say, well, I don't want to waste my votes on the green because it might allow another party to get in. But if we had proportional representation where maybe I'm not going to win this riding, but we might get enough votes that we'll get a couple more MPs in the House of Commons because we got a million votes, which the Greens had a million votes one year, and I think Elizabeth May was the only one if she even got in that year, I can't remember. So, you know, that's a million votes. You think you'd have a member of parliament or more elected, right? Manufacturing's big in Windsor and Essex County. What would you do to retain or attract new uh, manufacturing to Windsor Tecumseh? Right. Well, uh, first, the, the current deals. We need to redo re, uh, the free trade agreements um, or reevaluate them because it's not free trade as it stands right now. Well, it is free trade, but it's not fair trade. We need fair trade. We can't, Canada can't compete with the low wages, the lack of environmental standards, uh, the lack of labor standards, um, the wages of, you know, countries like Mexico, India, China. Um, you know, they, they can build wherever they want. There's, there's no, nothing stopping them. So we need fair trade. Uh, also, we would uh, work with unions, labor, the industry, businesses. And, and see what the best process is to move ahead, to get better deals for employees as opposed to just corporations. Um, yeah, so that we'd work with everyone trying to get better deals. There's a, there's a, 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 a stipulation right now. It's, I can't remember what it is. No, sorry, I want to look it up because it's, it's how, well, ba it's, it's a certain thing in, legisl in part of the acts that allow corporations to sue governments. That needs to be taken out. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's written down here, but I don't have it handy. So as it stands right now, a corporation can sue the Ontario government or Canada if we're, tr we're stopping them from doing what they want to do. And that just, that, that shouldn't be right. That needs to be taken out altogether. Okay. There's still a lot of farmers and agribusiness, uh, Bonduel in Windsor Tecumseh. Uh, what could you do for them? Well, we, uh, we'd like to see diversification. We want to get rid of industrial agriculture where, you know, the current in large uh, farms are just exploiting the resources, the land. Uh, we'd like to see more mixed local family farms. Uh, we'd see diversification to see what kind of products they can grow us, you know, specifically. Uh, we seem to do be doing a lot of corn and tomatoes, which is awesome because corn's amazing and tomatoes are great. Uh, but we'd like to see a little more diversification. We'd like to see the hemp industry come in here uh, right now. Uh, um, the hemp industry can't be involved in the medicinal part of uh, cannabis, which we'd like to open that up. Hemp can also be used to make uh, construction materials, uh, plastics, clothing. Uh, we see a whole new sector coming in in that way, an investment into that and help the local economy that way. What, what are the people telling you at the door when you knock on the door and you say you're from the Green Party? It's encouraging. So far, uh, no one's been, um, everyone's been good to see that we're running in the area. Um, 
th they all have concerns that they think that we'd be good to represent them. However, their concern is that you know we might not have strong enough voice. But uh, so far, it's been great. Everyone's happy. Okay, we got about a minute left. Sorry, uh, <laughs> about a minute left. And so here's your chance to make your pitch to the voters why they should vote for you. Yeah, hi, th thank you everyone. My name is Giovanni Abadi. I'm running for the Green Party of Windsor Tecumseh. Um, I ran because I'm tired of the same old, same old uh, with the current po uh, um, parties that are running. We offer affordability for everyone and looking at a prosperous economy with a healthy environment, decisions would be made to make sure that whatever's done is sustainable. Uh, we're not against development, we just think we need sustainable development and always keep water quality, air quality, um, and land in mind when we're looking at development. So um, if you uh, want, and we're also open, that we can't be whipped into voting, so if uh, our area wants something specifically voted on, as, a, as the MP for the area, I don't have to go along with the Green Party. I'm able to have an independent voice and represent our constituents as opposed to always following the party line. Okay, thank, thank you. you for being here Thanks, and Mr. good luck. Thank you for, for joining us on We Politics and we look forward to you joining us again soon.